I love it when you do that. Ugh, I don't like that look. It's like you perked up or something. You at the dance club and then the dude's just like. Like, what are you doing? What are you actually doing, bro? How y'all doing? It's your boy JC and welcome back to Perfume Air. Another part, <sighs> real quick. I don't know if y'all watch uh, Atlanta. Boy, they just dropped another season. Were well, they doing it in the TV format? So, yep, there it is. Season three. Can y'all see that? Let's just continue on with the game, but I'm hyped for that. Uh, it, it should be coming out. All right, I expect the most juice from this episode. If I don't get the most juice, we're riding because every single time, look, we're going in the club. The club should be action packed, PDR. Action pecto. Where did I start off from? Mm -hmm. Bruh. I don't know why I gave y'all that look. I think this is where I start off from. Oh, yeah, we had to make a decision, which none of y'all told me to what to do. Which, you know, I've got, of course, shout out the, the one and only Balcony. So, Balcony did say the reason why Rook said she want, chose to develop the visual novel first because as a non-native english speaker she found one of the lines text easier to code i know it confuses me too but because the vn is way more work than the current version she's working on but the full game will have more content and will be more immersive the demo is missing tons of content and branches the evolution game will have some visual artwork but it's going to be mostly text i believe and the demo version already starts differently and it should have a bigger update in a month or so okay okay so i guess that's good to know i feel like for the most part we might still do Almagam, and i kind of just want to if like again if, if no one says anything i'm just probably just gonna go with Almagam or gom i think i said that correct i'm not too sure but shout out to pdr rook for still trying to keep up with the times and do things so all you could do was this is a critical choice this was like some backstory stuff you expected the same kid you remember oh yeah this was uh yeah we ran into donegal at the bar i think this is donegal help him out so we could just do this if this changes our if we get a good ending from this then oh well let's help him out i didn't take much all he need was a pull to get back on his feet it was enough for him to know that you there was still someone who had his back why shouldn't he he was one he was the one who got you out of the academy kept the spd agents off your back you only had each other who could he trust if not you for as for his former friends well alan found himself short of hireling uh or three but he had gained a norm a loyal member for his crew so it was a win-win for everyone involved in more ways than one the damage was done however and some things were harder to recover than from others the life reads uh, leading now was never what he wanted but it is what he got and he is making the best of it you both do you don't talk about it often you know it's the last thing you'd want so you dispel those thoughts from your head as soon as they appear something in your eyes to give has to give you away because reed snorts when you look at him nothing hides from you eh from the first time since you became friends he sounds bitter about it you never thought to see him fragile again here like this he looks startlingly similar to that boy you saw years ago crying his eyes out in the black bathroom floor clutching an empty bottle of vodka like a lifeline don't pity me you didn't then so you don't do it now i don't pity you no then what is it you feel? You're reading my mind, aren't you? Sympathy? Discuss? Will you ever forget the pathetic wreck you came across that night? Read. His shoulders sag. Our characters sound like she is done with this nigga, bruh. Oh my gosh. Uh, and the misery in his scent makes it harder to breathe. You take a step towards him and he takes one back and shake on his head. I don't want to feel like that. The smell of him choking. Bone ch chilling. Crap. Yeah, bye. Look at me. He laughs again, but this time it's cracked. More of a pain side. Freaking pathetic. Bro, this is the energy you're bringing to the freaking sea chant? She's now smelling what? like odor because you left her. Bruh. All right. Um, you can't stand to see him like that. You really can. It's not that bad. All right. So again, I'm not gonna lie. I'm probably just gonna go for the fact that I don't personally feel for Reed. I don't think he's my type. If I were, if I were to swing that way, you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like I would be. That would be my type. And at least I guess the, for the character that we're building up, um, I don't think that's uh, nigga senpai's type, in my opinion. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but since we're trying to figure out to how we get the good ending let's just keep going. Cause you know what's weird? There was an option where it was like 
you could love him up but then it made it look more weird to love him up so i since i didn't love him up that last option why am i saying love him up just the hard option i'm just going to do you've looked worse the sharp scent of misery eases off replaced by a spark of amusement yeah after the finals during the last year of he sputters despite himself tries to hold back a, a groan at the memory you don't even bother your hair was like no no you he wheezes you promised to never in your face ah uh, him yeah she's waiting come on your head snaps to the door wide open revealing Gemma as she stares at the both of you the size of her eyes are rivals a large tray she carries under her arm the hall is clear have fun with a nod direct to your way Gemma steps to the side let two of you inside she grabs my cheek yeah. what she doesn't wait on you though she throws a curious glance over her shoulder as she turns left into the staff room. The Reed's face is expressionless again, curiously so, but before you can ask about the abrupt change in his demeanor, he flashes one of his signature smiles. Let the fun begin, eh? A tremor in his voice is barely noticeable through the drumming of your own rapid pulse. With the arm wrapped leisurely around your shoulders, he guides you to the right, where the music is the loudest. Yeah, take that out of the freaking... <laughs> low pass filter honestly josh put a low pass filter on this like i'll do you the favor tacky electronic music pulsates through your skin rings in your ears the rapid beat resonates down ringing in your ears as you step into the room the club looks as just as you remember it from your first and last visit the light flashes red and pink the pungent malodor of sweat and perfume air eh? perfume mixes with the alcohol like fire and gasoline the thick haze of wonderful smoke that raises up in your arms doesn't help the matter breathing through your mouth your gulp mouthfuls of stench used to get to, to a quitter quicker it's a chore though you and you have to swallow down the bile that rises to your throat reed for his part looks like he belongs here in his expensive clothes hair gel carefully gelled to look messy but not like he spent the last few hours combining combing it that way all right okay we get it reed is hot you on the other hand try your best not to blend with the crown not to look nauseous i guess which is hard the repetitive music and the loud voices yelling at each other you feel the eyes on you judging and staring you don't belong here the arm pulls you closer with the warmth of reed's side different circumstances you'd be ashamed of yourself the way you grip him tightly digging your nails into the meat of his arm why are you digging his ne your nails into the meat of his arm we could still turn back shut up just keep moving you could read my mind don't tempt me facts i'll check the bar don't get into trouble without me yeah his tone deliberately light and his smile shows the hint of strain me you return the smile hoping that it would look more steady than it feels i would never uh-huh uh-huh he doesn't tease you about the trouble that you got into the particular mess of a situation though it be you wouldn't blame him for it he runs his fingers over your arm as he passes you by eyes already turned on the crowd sharp and piercing what's up with it i'm about that action any y'all can get it between one and another he's gone melting into the cloud of bright pink smoke over the jumble of the other aromas like fruit and perfume mixed with the odor of human emotions you can still smell the scent of his skin what are we a freaking dire wolf you can find him easily if need be for now though you focus on the mass of people careful not to make any eye contact you're not here to play and you can't afford that to catch someone's interest grazing over the faces as subtly as you can you look for a familiar one but you find none in the sea of strangers you want to start with um you want to find a guy whose hiding place is a nightclub you might want to try the dance floor first right um there's enough attractive people around to lure a man fickle as marco yeah just show some cleavage you push through the swarm of patrons dodging a few pairs of wandering hands nearly escaping the glass tray of vodka that lance sloshed on the tips of your shoes great bro stop it you know you ain't don't care about them extra skets uh sketchers ske stop it the lights flicker and you strain your eyes i'm not gonna cap bro like if you have been do a basketball game that will hurt your eyes someone with eye conditions as me i can't do that nope halfway through the room you almost give up catching the side of the bathroom door and the sharp tang of chlorine and ammonia <laughs> that could offer you a momentary respite if not from the noise 
Then from the odor, you don't get to think about it long at all, though when the unmistakable fragrance of high-end cologne and situated with a pungent mask of tobacco reaches you in the middle of the dance floor, Marco. Your body moves as if led by a rope. I need uh, where you come back where you came from. All right, brother. This man got a scar like he's freaking built like an antagonist. Your guy standing on the stairs near the archway leads that leads to the VIP section of the club. With his face illuminated by the bright neon sign hanging above him, it's easy to distinguish his features. The slightest change in his expression, the way he's staring at you, the patrons turning their heads in their direction. When you're sure you notice him, he takes a step back without turning, making sure you're still watching as he vanishes in the partial darkness of the hallway. What is this, uh, do they, do we know his, uh, perfumer? Oh, he don't have a perfumer. Why was the dude look at me like the typical, like, you at the dance club and then the dude's just like. Like, what are you doing? What are you actually doing, bro? You could have got the wrong blonde hair brunette. Wait, did that make sense? Bruh. I don't even know how our character looks. Low key. When he's making sure you noticed him, he's tapes, he takes a step back without turning, making sure you're still watching as he vanishes in the partial darkness of the hallway. <sighs> I knew they were gonna give us this option on these choices. Let's do the first option. We're going this route. You jump to your feet in an instant, he's gone, setting the table screeching a couple of inches backwards. Not wasting a second, you rush past the room and onto the stairs, only to get stopped by a bouncer. VIP is by invitation only. If you don't persuade him, use your lure. Another invitation, what the heck? I don't have time for that. I said, oh F this, and I said, say goodnight, an old spiel, but you don't even bother to look him in the eye as you circle around him. Time for a nap, don't you think? The only response you get is a thud is get is the thud of his body hitting the floor. It works every time. Yeah, thought so. With that hindrance dealt. Wait, did we use our our allure? What the frick was that? With the hindrance dealt with, you jump up to the stairs, dashing down the hallway into the part of a club that you've never had the occasion of visiting before. Oh, uh, we are in lurky waters, bro. This is what exactly what I wanted, PDR. The lingering aroma of spilled wine and wax floor tickles your nose. Your shoes rattles on the smooth tiles, and you have to slow down not to slip. The red lights are not helping and reflecting off every surface, brightening the ornate tapestries in uneven splotches. Thankfully, you don't have to run long. What up, brother? Marco's waiting for you in the middle, grinning like a child on a Christmas morning. Hey, smooth talker. The thin, ragged scar on the side of his face stretches as his brow shoots up in a feeble, fake surprise. Though one of his eyes is discolored, reminder of an old injury. His sight is intact. His fortune is vast enough to afford him to take care of the best healer in the capital. Of course you got a healer on deck. What brings you here? To my humble abode. You know why I'm here, brother. What's up with Victor, huh? Let's get to it. His originally low voice comes out even huskier. Is if you were giftless, you'd call it for flirtation. But you could smell the sting of distress in his scent, buried with alcohol. Take a guess. The smirk doesn't vanish. On the contrary, it grows wider as he regards you with his heed, his head tilted to the side. Well, my first one would be that you could just couldn't just wait to see me. Try again. Hmm. No, that's my definite answer. With the air of the man who has all the time in the world, he hooks a hand into the low waistband of his pants. I'm afraid I have no idea what you're going on about. He's lying. You could spot a, f a fibber faster than they can try to spin their tail. But he disguises his scent well over the stench of cologne and cigarette smoke. You can't read him at all. Does the name Victor mean anything to you? Victor... Victor, hmm, no, I can't say it does. Ah, oh, wait, little Victor. <laughs> yes, silly me. He needed a deal. He needed it fast. But I was busy at the moment, so I thought, why not send it to nigga senpai? You set me up, you. Let's not be so hasty. I made a mistake, a slip up, if you will. I don't believe you. Well, I don't blame you. Okay, look, I didn't know, all right? I never took him for a guy with... Well, you knew the man. He's never been the sharpest tool in the shed. That's putting it mightily. 
I didn't expect him to grow a brain and start teaming up with some lone life mercenaries. Okay, you got beef. It's clear. What are you talking about? What? It's, it's kind of obvious, isn't it? To have his cake and eat it too. You're saying he wanted to get the cargo and the money? Yes? Don't get me wrong. I don't give a crap that he wanted to mess with Dia's cargo. He is the She is the competition after all. I just didn't think he wanted to kill you. I didn't think he had it in. You expect me to just take your word for it? No. I could prove it. I have the receipt on me. So you knew I was coming, bruh. Using his free hand, slowly, as if, as if not to spook you, he pulls out a haphazardly folded sheet of printed paper from the front pocket of his pants. The font is so small you can't decipher anything standing so far from him. There, you can have it. He outstretches his arm, holds the document like a peace offering. Let's call it burning the hatchet. Uh-huh. And you were just keeping that on you the entire time? I was hopeful you decide to pay me a visit. And why would you? To clear my name. You snort. Why would a guy so sleazy give a half F about clearing his name? You eye the document warily, squinting your eyes in an unsuccessful attempt at reading the smudge lettering. If Marco isn't bluffing, that small square of paper might be hold the answer to all questions that have been plaguing you since you woke up in your old place, confused by beyond measure. So, what do you say? Truce? He waves his hand a bit, making the document ruffle as it sways, held lightly between his two fingers. Fine. You extend that hand quickly before he could change his mind. His grip on the paper slips. Whoops. The document falls from his hand, but you catch it before he touches the ground. Before you could straighten your back, the sound of a gun being cocked freezes you in place. I knew I shouldn't have done this. Marco's giftless, but not harmless, and you just made a rookie mistake. Is this an end? It's nothing personal. Yeah, he came to kill us. It's nothing personal. What? You just got yourself in the- Oh! So is Marco a shift shifter, or is this like all a part of Sylvia's plan? You heard those words before. The night of Victor's murder from a woman who shares your affliction. Suddenly, it catches up with you. In the back of your head, a memory awakens. Dark blue eyes pierce right through you, dazing, hypnotizing. Her words cling to you like honey, low and sweet. You can hear Marco's voice somewhere around you, but it sounds so far away, merging with the background noise. On the forefront, there's a warehouse, the mercenaries, Victor's blood cooling on the floor. In you, you're clutching your jacket, holding the sleeves up, tying them together to form a tight noose intended to fit around your neck and suffocate you without leaving a trace. Then Jules' voice pierces through the haze in your mind, cutting through the woman's order. Your grip on the material loosens. The jacket falls out of your grip and you abandon it there, incriminating evidence in the mud as you run out of the warehouse with the last command ringing in your ears. Forget, forget everything you just saw. So, and so you forgot, but you remember now. Dang, bro, we still gonna die, right? The memory phase that you just registered cold hard metal. If this is just a regular shape shifter, we shouldn't be surprised, right? But I feel, still felt like we could use a lure here. The cold metal of the muzzle pressed none too gently against your forehead. The swishing sound of air leaving your lungs. The trigger clicks and the shot rings once. And, <laughs> yep. I hate it here. So we gotta get greed, which sucks, but... Yeah. Read! You almost shout, stopping yourself at the last possible moment to say that in your mind, hoping that the, despite the raging cacophony, Reed will be able to make out your voice. I saw him. You're not sure if it worked. You can read your mind. In the tumult of the club, it's hard to hear your own thoughts, let alone someone else's. But no more than a second later, a response comes ringing in your skull, clearer than he'd be standing right beside you. Yup. Stay where you are. It sounds urgent. And you know better than to try it and argue with him. Besides, knowing Marco following him by yourself wouldn't be the wisest of ideas. Yeah, we get it, PDR Rook. Yeah, dang. You don't have to wait long before you spot Reed emerging from the fumes. You push yourself to your feet with all composure you can afford, walking to meet him in the middle. With one palm splayed over your back, Reed pulls you forward until fronts connect partially. Where did he go? 
You feel the words more than you hear them, pressed against the skin of your cheek. Standing so close, you are acutely aware of every breath he takes as his chest rises and falls against yours. To the VIP section. The locks of his hair smelling strongly of pomade brush. Uh, I'd better not be 360 waves, bruh. Brush against the bridge of your nose as his head turns to the side. His muscles tense like he wants nothing more to than dash after Marco, but he refrains. We have to deal with the bouncer. I got him. The bouncer? Uh, you didn't even think about that. He shouldn't be a problem, though. Leave it to me. Tap in Reed's arm to get him moving. You stride towards the burly man in the corner. He notices you approach. His, his mouth moves, no doubt, to ask you to leave or your bar entrance. So you beat him to it. Say goodnight. All right. Time for a nap, don't you think? There you go. Let's get it. Reed's snicker is quiet, but, dis but distinctively amused. I love it when you do that. Ugh, I don't like that look. It's like you perked up or something. There's something in watching others being so complying. Yes, even after years, it's it, it never gets old. She been doing it, doing it. Come on. You rush up the stairs, unseen by the rest of the patrons that are huddled up on the other side of the club. Where does the freaker go? There aren't enough doors there that he could be anywhere. Just read his mind. Take a breath, searching for the scent of tobacco, but finding the aroma of Florax and H wine instead. The bright lights aren't helping you locate Marco either. Reflecting off of the surface, brightening the ornate tapestries and uneven art. We already did that. There. There it is. He as he loses his balance, stumbling a step before twirling around to greet you, having already lost the chase. Nigga, senpai. He's not winded, but his smirk shows the hint of strain. I see you brought your pet. He nods at Reed, never taking his eyes off of yours. Careful, he bites. Yeah, we know. Hard. Don't just say hard like that. Reed finishes the sentence for you pressing his arm into yours. It's not an idle threat. Reed's vain, but he's not stupid. He's over-frequent. Trips to the gym aren't for show. If push comes to shove, he can land a mean right hook. And that's far better than biting. But you you know he got a gun though, right? Cute. Marker regards you with his grin so sharp that it cuts glaciers. But his scent turns out to be a bit a crid, a bit scared. He plays a part well as he opens his arms in a gesture that onto a man such as him looks downright mocking well with the idle warnings out of the way tell me the thin ragged scar on the side of his face stretches as his brow shoots up what brings you here to my humble abode originally his low voice blah 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 don't play a fool we haven't seen each other in a while and that's how you greet an old friend don't flatter yourself nigga barely knows your name marco eyes narrow and bewilderment what is he on about you don't feel the need to explain that one to him never mind right with the air of a man who has all the time in the world marco hooks a hand into the low waistband of his pants not that meeting you two wasn't a delightful experience but i think i need to not so fast we're here to ask about victor i'm afraid i have no idea what you're talking about he's lying all right yeah that's not what i've heard the expression of deep shock bleeds through the cracks of Marco's mask, though he squanders it admirably, admir, admirably fast. Ah, oh, wait, little Victor, yes, silly me. He needed a deal, he needed fast. I was busy at the moment, so I thought, why not send him to nigga? You son of a- Let's not be hasty. I made a mistake, a slip up, if you will. I'll give you a slip up, you- Okay, okay. Calm down. I didn't know. All right. I never took Victor for a guy with, well, you knew the man. He's never been the sharpest tool in the shed. That's putting it mightily. I lit, bruh, stop reading my mind. I didn't expect him to grow a brain and start teaming up with some low life mercenaries. Oh, really? You didn't help him with this plan at all? You didn't think too highly of me. No, I don't. So you're saying he wanted to get the cargo and the money? Yes, don't get me the wrong. It'll give crap about Dia. She is complete competition. I didn't think he wanted to kill you. Uh, I didn't think he had it in for him. You expect us to fall for this? No, I can prove it. I have the receipt on me. Okay, okay, there you can have it. All right, let's call it burn the hatchet. All right, you have the very important receipt on hand. Didn't you change your pants since you made that deal with Vic? Do you want it or not? All right, yeah, don't take it, bro. Fine. All right, get ready to attack, bro. Whoops. Nick survived. Wait. Close your fingers on the seat before you can strain your back, son of a cock. Added receipt. I actually didn't notice this. Oh, we can't click on it though. It's nothing personal. All right, do we still die here? He has to do something. Then a much deeper noise as the gun is ripped out of Marco's hand and whipped straight into his head. Your hold on the document tightens reflexively. Oh, freak. 
Suddenly the flashback leaves you winded, dizzy, and out of it staggering, your heart drums in your chest. Did Reed take the gun? The bone in Marco's hand snaps, sickening crunch as Reed pivots and his twists his arms, kicking the gun away. Marco shouts, pierces through the corridor, full-throated and blaring over the rep repetitious music. And it forces you to move, taking a gander at the hallway. It's empty. Nobody has heard you yet. Marco Stark staggers to the ground. With a little help from Reed, the next kick meets Marco's side. Yes, sir, flipping him on his back. He whimpers as he's wiggling on the ground like a ringworm. And to think he has he was so cocky, flopping his gun around. Reed's a uh, patient man, usually more than you, but not today. He stomps on Marco's broken arm. Dang, so that boy broke it. Just in the right spot to get the bone to break in another place. Uh, resulting in how is weaker than the last one, but just as satisfying. Flying Marco to the ground with a well-placed kick. Reed finally lifts his head to look at you. One more, yeah? He won't need hands anyway after I'm done with him. Reed, let's just go. He's not going to be a problem for us anymore. At least you think he won't, not with a broken arm. It seems to be a smashed nose. Right. Hmm, maybe he's not a shapeshifter then. I don't know. Because I was thinking like the fact that that call, that similarity reference to like what happened with Sylvia. Maybe that was just like a coincidental moment, but... Reed eases off his shoe off of Marco's stomach, though it's obvious he's doing it with reluctance. S glancing at the slump body at Reed's face scrunches and grimace, you might make, make him you might mistake for disgust. But he's far from disgusted. He's furious. This freaker. We should. He cuts himself off, clenching his fist. Nothing there. Nothing. There's nothing you can do to Marco. If you kill him, you're done for. First degree mur mur murder on top of another would be easily proven. If, even if the first one won't. Besides, Marco's father won't let it stand. Even if his sister couldn't care less. But you leave Marco like this, there might be a chance he won't bother you anymore. You're gonna make me chick? Uh, you're gonna make me pig? We have to, we have what we came for. It's time to go. You grab Reed by the cuff and he goes willingly as you pull him along down the hallway. Your pace is steady. The fingers you squeeze on the material of Reed's jacket is a bit too tightly. By the time you reach the parking lot, Reed, Reed is good as new. His clothes are straightened, his hair is back in place, only his knuckles redden where there's rubbed, sc scrubbed raw. A mile long smile appears intact, if more than a little forced. You get into Reed's cars with no disturbance. Not that anybody would pay attention to the pair of young p people looking a little ruffled this late into the night. He don't speak as Reed starts the car. It takes him three tries to get the engine going. His hand shakes so badly he can't fit the key into the ignition. You're not firing any better. Find the key, turns, and the engine starts. Reed pushes the clutch pedal more force than necessary. The car drives off with a blazing scourge of the screech of the tires. Bro, you don't have to be so dramatic. Out of the driveway and into no particular direction. Give me a new chapter, bruh. Chapter 5, let's get it. You don't get all that far before Reed's hands, sweaty and shaken as badly as they are, slide down the steering wheel, unable to get a steady grip. The car swerves sharply, narrowly missing the pole, and you, with nothing to keep you grounded, lurch forward. Bro, why are you such in your emotions, bro? You beat that man to death. Seatbelt! He barks, catching the wheel with one hand and pressing another. You my dad, bro? You can't even move if you even wanted to, and all you could do is whisper. Stop the car. He doesn't hear you, though. There's some nothing surprising about that over the deafening roar of the engine. You don't immediately reach for the seatbelt. Reed takes his eyes off the road and sends you a scalding look. Why are you taking your anger out on me? Put the seatbelt on. He repeats, insistent, struggling with driving and holding down at the same time. Just put the seatbelt on. His tone is sharp, snappy, but the way it breaks at the end gives you a push you needed to act. So you yell. I said stop the freaking car. Ooh. Can't be sure what startles Reed more, the anger in your voice or the volume of it. But for once in his life, he doesn't argue. He slams the brakes faster than humanly possible. The scar screeches and half and halts half on the pavement and half on the road. He's lucky the street is completely empty or running away from Marco would have been the least of your worries. Yeah, bye. He's upset. You can smell it rolling off of him in waves. Freaking yeah, bye. His hand, his fingers squeeze in the steering wheel. The leather squelches immediately. Jesus. And the <laughs> the drumming starts. Calm down. He snorts a hasty peeves wheeze. That only swerves serves to increase your irritation. Easy to say. It's not, Reed. Nothing about it. This is easy. About this is easy. 
His mouth snaps shut, his eyes narrow, and heavy, strained silence falls over the two of you, interrupted by your harsh breathing as you sit here, fuming, chin lifted in a mute defiance. The tension between you grows, then cracks. <sighs> Freak, sorry, I... Reed flinches, breaking the starting, staring the contest, and takes his hands off the steering wheel and presses flat against his thighs, as if hoping that would stop them from trembling. His shoulders sag. It's just, you just act like you're unstoppable all the time. Look, bruh, I'm trying to save you. You's finna kill the boy. He's stumbling over his words in a manner like so unlike him that rage coiling in your gut evap evaporates instantly, giving a way to concern. He almost freaking shot you. If I hadn't been there, he, with a strangled groan, Reed pauses to run a hand through his slick hair. And though it's clear that he tries to, Nothing else comes out of the, his throat. But, but you were. You mutter. After what it feels like an hour, forcing the words past your numb lips. You were there, and that's all that matters. Because whatever would happen, didn't. And you're here now, safe and alive. The last thing you want to do is think about any other outcome. Neither does Reed. If the grimace that splits his face is anything to go by. He lets his head fall back as he sinks into the sleek leather of the driver's seat. He doesn't ask if you're okay. Doesn't need to. Instead, with a jerky nod, he points to the folded sheet of paper, still held tightly in your fist. What's that? You would almost forgotten about the document, if not for the persistent ache in your joints that ease off once unclench your fingers to spread the sheet out. Okay, what does it say? I'm not gonna lie, you got uh, some RGB, some distorted RGB, so this is kind of messing up with my eyes, I'm not gonna lie. So it's, uh, it's like a hundred, 130 bands. I can't see. It's a payment. Uh, I should probably read the subtitle, right? I'm stupid. Bruh. It's a payment confirmation for 130 grand made in Victor's name, sent to someone named Rosaline. I oh, that's freaking freckled. Ginger Christmas, Ivoris. Reed interrupts, leaning forward to look over your shoulder. His eyes narrow as he scans the text. She's from the SPD. Are you sure? 100%. Then Marco was in line, huh? Reed's head tilts to the side as he observes you from the behind his fringe. So that was just him defending himself. Okay. I really thought that was Sylvia the shapeshifter. That's crazy. You're surprised? You shrug. I expect him to bluff. Well, he was. The briefery, the breary tinge of fury in Reed's scent, which had started to wane, spikes up tenfold effort didn't even plan to give up the receipt it's evident that he didn't yeah he got some anger issues marco used a real document instead of a prop because he wanted because he was so dang certain he'd get you before you could even lay a finger he didn't expect reed to act as quickly as he did strangely enough the reality of being an inch from death by a bullet to the head doesn't rattle you as half as much as the reappearance of your missing memory the mirage of a woman enthralling you, leading you to your doom. It almost feels feels almost perverse to be killed by the same weapon you wield, and to think you'd almost give in. Your hands were lifting the makeshift noose, and if not for Jewel, your body would have been found alongside Victor's day after, half burned and abandoned in an empty warehouse. That's facts. That's low key why I probably like Jewel more. But TBH. I do feel like we need to get better, like, as far as, like, uh, shape shifting, not shape shifting, but, like, our lore. We need to get better in our lore. Maybe that could be a possibility in the full game. Nobody would have ever known the truth. The image sears itself into your mind. The odor of burnt flesh nearly makes you throw up. But that's not all. But you choke out eventually, swallowing the, against the wave of nausea. See you, bitch. Reed rolls the window all the way down and let the fresh air in. More bad news. You take a breath, then another, and when it doesn't come out shaky, you begin. I think I saw her. Reed frowns at you, watching you as you fold the paper back into the neat square and hide the receipt between the pages of your notebook. Ivoris? You nod. I, I remember now. A, wo a tall woman. Maybe in her early 50s. Oh yeah, she old, old with long brown hair and that's not her. Ivor Ivores isn't tall and she's Alon's age. 
So not even 30. Oh, then who? Tall brown. It's not much to go on, you know? The way way to state the obvious, uh, absolute obvious. That's an understatement, bro. More than we have more than we had an hour ago. You muttering. You forgot to add she looked like Jennifer Lawrence. You glaring at Reese sideways. Okay, okay. Start from the beginning. What's with the woman and where did you see her? At the warehouse. She tried to use her gift, a lure, to make me strangle myself. What the freak? Your thoughts exactly. But to be fair, lore isn't a rare gift. If any, if anything, it's one of the most common. We a we a basic broad. So that tidbit of information not only doesn't narrow down to the list of your possible almost murderers, but expands it even further. Reed shakes his head, pushing his cheek against the leather like a cat seeking comfort in an inanimate object. From an inanimate object, he chews on his lower lip, weighing on his thoughts. So we had SBD Snitch making sketchy deals with Vic, the mercenary who wanted to kill you and Marco, who, by the way, should be pushing daisies for all I care. He starts out a light, almost teasing. By the time he says Victor's name, he, the, his voice drops in volume, and the rest of the sentence resembles a snarl more than a casual comment. I told you, he fumes, pushing himself off of the seat. He's facing you fully. Leftover adrenaline squeezes his throat. His word, smooth in his words. I told you the deal wasn't, was too good to be true. And you called me paranoid. You are paranoid though. Oh, uh, that doesn't work. Don't fight fire with fire. Oh my God. This dude is like the Hulk, bruh. His jaw clenches at the remark. Like he's trying to very badly to keep his thoughts from escaping his mouth. He was never good at containing himself. And you're so freaking reckless. He's not wrong. There's nothing you could say that, to counter that. You go for a cliche instead. It takes, to know, it takes one to know one, eh? It has intended effect and Reed's eyes widen so rapidly you're impressed that they just don't pop out of his head. Me? He yelps, slapping his hand against his chest. Honestly peeved. That's coming from a guy who makes a living by pretending to be a thug. Reckless? You did almost send Marco to the morgue with one-way ticket. What do you call that if it not reckless? Fair. Well, he's got you there. I mean, he deserved a beatdown, but not death. By the way, infuriating smirk that curls the corner of his lips. He knows it too. It's irritating, but you really can't stay mad at him for long. You don't let him start gloating though. Um, tamping down the budding smile before it truly formed. What do we do with the receipt? Resolutely, you return to the subject at hand, more willing to let his outburst pass. Should we contact the SPD? Yeah, right. Reed lets out a huff, huff of not so amused breath through his nostrils. Do you fancy a trip to Galdo? I've heard they've had nice bears be beds there. Concrete. Right. Not ideal. Maybe Laurent could. Reed's eyes shoot to yours and he stares at you. He's trying to remind us we on Reed's route, not Laurent's. No way. Besides, he's out of the picture. What? Well, gone. Puff. He waves his hand, outstretches himself with a console folding his arm loosely on top of the steering wheel in a one smooth movement. Alon keeps an eye on everyone, and apparently Officer Craphead has left a Lazar. And good riddance. What for? Do you know why? Something something business something. His arms rise and fall, an unconcerned shrug. At least you think it's a shrug. With his arm twisted like that, it's hard really to tell. Who cares? We care. You feel like you need to stress that point. So you wait until Reed meets your eye to continue. Because now there's no one in the SPD we can ask for help. We need help, Reed. We really do. His expression pinches. And though you're prepared to hear a counter argument, he doesn't say a thing. There's a bit of silence when all he does is stare at you with hard, piercing eyes and a small frown that appears to be more gloomy than angry. I know. There's someone. There is someone. Oh, we got a rat? A mole? He says in a tone you can't describe as anything but resigned. Another friend? The answering laugh is hollow. When he looks at you, his expression betrays none the, of the ex, ex, anxiety you smell in his scent. And considers you for a moment before shaking his head. Oh, we gonna get freaking Flavio. That's what we gonna get. He doesn't elaborate. We're gonna get his brother. Big brother. 
Oni-chan. He doesn't elaborate. Instead, he grabs his phone and unlocks it. Instead of opening the contact list like you thought he would, he pushes the number from memory easily without a bit of hesitation. Yep, that's that family love. His finger falters only briefly as he pressed the dial button. Soon, the beeping sound of the number being rung reverber rever re reverberates in the evening air. Does it take long for the recipient to pick up? Barely two pings and the beeping stops. There's a complete silence on the other side. Only a sharp breath tells you that the receiver is still on the line. Pronto. Reed snaps when the stillness becomes unbearable, pressing a phone closer to his ear. His eyes squeeze shut when the answering voice mumbles something back. A string of words too muffled for you to understand. See, si. sono yo. The code detached tone with the look of absolute anguish Reed fails to conceal. Me devi fair un favor. Whatever the reply is, it can't be anything bad because when Reed hears it, the acidity in his scent loses its bite. Va bien. Si vendia le misurata. Li le dra misura. He doesn't seem to care for a response, whatever that might be. As soon as he's done, he disconnects, squeezing the red button, throwing the phone over his shoulder. And lands somewhere in the back seat, screen down. You're too busy staring at Reed to give him much attention. He said it'll help. That was kind of vague, brother. Tell me who you talking to. He's saying if anything is far from calm. Are you sure it's good to drive? Not looking up from the task. Reed raises a brow and challenge. Why, do you want to take over? Not really. Then buckle up and stop complaining. Yeah, I knew that was a smart re remark, but it didn't matter. I need some sleep. What? Are you sure you're okay? Yes. Really? Why? He croons gleefully, though it's more than show for anything. Are you worried about me? Shouldn't I be? You almost crashed the car. Almost being, almost being the key word. Uh-huh. He was on a roll, clear as day. You won't succeed in talking him down. Not like when he's like this. Tunts and rung tight. Hey, yo. All right, guys, we're going to stop it here. Come on, bro. It's obvious he was talking to Flavio because he don't like Flavio. I don't think he do. From uh, at least from what I remember in this past. Because this is also the thing that we uh, saw we can look at. So pronto means hello, ready to speak. Yes, it's me. Um, You must do me a favor. Sure. See you there in half an hour. Okay. So we're going to be meeting Flavio in, uh, Flavio in a half an hour. All right, y'all. Um, That'll do for this episode. I enjoy this one. This one's actually pretty good. We got to know more about what happened with Marco and how he was telling the truth. But, you know, him still being, a, you know, a bad person or not the best of people. He kind of saw what happened to him. But, um, yeah, I'm curious to see how this is gonna end i have a general gist of what's gonna really happen though because other two endings of the other routes are the same in a way like we still kind of get like a a happy ending if you get the good ending one of the endings i don't know man we'll see we'll see but yeah appreciate y'all as usual shout out balcony and let me know your theories as usual stay blessed keep your space strong and we'll see you when i see you